Hey, CYT. Welcome to episode two. I hope you missed us as much as we missed you. Bradley, um, how you doing? Fine, and yourself? Today we are going to be talking about some of the more technical aspects of self-tapes. Boring. Actually, Bradley, one of your goals when making self-tapes is to make the production of them seem invisible. But if you're invisible, then how can we see you? Not you, you silly. I'm talking about the sound, lights, and background that we can see or hear when we watch self-tapes. Oh. Let's start with the background. Background. A blank single-colored wall is your best option. Cream, light blue, or gray are the most common colors used in self-tapes. If you don't have a blank wall, then you can hang up a curtain or a bedsheet to create a non-distracting background. You want to avoid a busy background with posters, artwork, clocks, flags, cats, or anything that would take the viewer's eyes off of you, the actor. Take a look at the visual difference between the two examples. The one on the left looks professional, and Delaney is the clear point of focus. The one on the right looks messy, amateur, and is visually distracting from the actor in the self-tape. Camera, camera. Thanks to the age we live in, we all have cameras in our pockets. The newer smartphone's camera quality is great and perfectly acceptable for any audition, especially if you don't want to get a whole new camera. If you do decide to film with your phone, though, make sure that you shoot it horizontally and not vertically. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, if you do have a smartphone, then you should get the app Slatable. <gasps> it's perfect for filming, editing, and sharing your auditions. Well, hang on a sec. What if I do want to buy a new camera for self-tapes? Then think of it like this. DLSRs, great. HD camera, best. 4K, fancy. But unnecessary because most computers slash TVs don't display 4K. Next, let's talk about framing. Whoa, I swear, officer, it was Michael all along. He's your man. Not me, I didn't steal anything. No, 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 not that kind of framing, Delaney. <laughs> Though it's nice to know who you'd throw under the bus. Yes. Very eye-opening, Delaney. Moving right along. Framing, in the world of self-taping, refers to where the actor appears on the screen. A tight shot should be the extreme close-up, which doesn't happen often in self-tapes. A medium shot is waist up. And a wide shot shows the actor as well as the environment he or she is in. But the two most common frames you'll use in self-tapes are chest up and shoulder up. Chest up means the actor's chest is on the bottom of the screen with a couple inches of empty space above their head. Shoulder up is the same as chest up, but instead, the shoulders are at the bottom of the frame. But make sure there isn't too much space above the actor's head. Remember, the focus on the screen should be the actor, not the ceiling fan. In addition to getting a camera, you should get a tripod as well. Even if you do get a camera, go online and order a tripod adapter for your phone, because it never hurts to have a backup plan. But if you don't want to spend any money and just MacGyver it, a bunch of books and boxes, a music stand, heck, even a ladder can be used for a makeshift tripod. Lighting. 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 No matter what light you use, you'll want to be using daylight bulbs. They make people look the most natural on camera, and they're easily found online. Ring lights are a popular and decently affordable option that can also be found online. Other options are studio umbrella lights or softbox lights. Softbox? Oh, I learned how to do that. Not beatbox, you dingus. A softbox light is a bunch of lights on a stand that live within a big box on top. The box is completely black except for one side that has a semi-translucent fabric over it. The umbrella light is exactly what it sounds like. It's a light on a stand with an umbrella made of that same semi-translucent fabric. Oh, no, I, yeah, I got it. Okay, that makes total sense. <clears throat> hey, is this online somewhere? Or... <laughs> yep. Just Google softbox studio lights or umbrella studio lights for tons of options. Oh, thank goodness. You'll want to get two lights and position them so they face you at diagonals on your left and right. If you want to get real fancy, you can have fill lights to help eliminate shadows. Fill? Fill the lights with what? Hopes? Dreams? Hand sanitizer? I ran out. All good intentions, but no. 
A fill light is a light used to fill the shadows created by other lights. Oh, so the shadows get a spotlight too? But the shadows are shy, so they run away. I get it. Yes. Something like that. Okay, okay. I think I got it. So here's some do's and don'ts. Do make sure we can see your face and eyes clearly. Don't overexpose the camera. That's when the light gets so bright it makes facial features hard to see. Do record in a quiet location. Don't wear tiny complex patterns because they can start to look like they're moving when shot on a camera with bright lights. Do give yourself a break. Whew, this is hard and takes practice to get right. Well, that's it for episode two. We hope you had some fun and that this video was as clear as mud. We will see you next time when we finally get to the acting. Bye. Bye.